welcome back. Before we get started today, I would like to kindly ask you all to please subscribe to this channel by clicking on the red subscribe button below. It won't cost you anything and it will go a long way to help me keep on delivering high quality Sudoku tutorials for you absolutely free. And I would also like to encourage you to visit my website for lots of information about my tutorials, several Sudoku essays that you may find interesting, and much more. And when you have time, please visit the Sudoku Swami gift shop where you can buy beautiful custom t-shirts and coffee mugs featuring my logo and some other humorous and catchy Sudoku phrases. You can find links to my website and to the gift shop in the description box below. All right, here we go. In the last video, we took a closer look at a discontinuous loop type 2 that has two strong links connected to the same candidate in the cell of discontinuity. Today, we are going to focus on a DL type 3. As you may recall from tutorial number 41, that a discontinuous loop type 3 is going to have one weak link and one strong link attached to two different candidates in the cell of discontinuity in an otherwise perfect loop. We're going to prove that the weakly linked candidate will turn out to be false and can therefore be eliminated. First, let's take a look at a typical DL type 3. Here in this diagram, we have a perfect alternating sequence of links, except for this cell where the propagation rules are broken. We have a weak link going out on this candidate 9, and then we have a strong link coming back in on this candidate 4. So this is our cell of discontinuity. In order to obey the propagation rules for an AIC of any kind, if we have a weak link and a strong link entering and leaving a cell, they must be attached to the same candidate. And since these two links are attached to two different candidates, it breaks the rules. Thus, it is a discontinuous loop. First, let's follow the inferences of this chain and see what happens. Since it is a weak link coming off of the 9, we start by assuming that candidate is true. So if the 9 is true, this 9 is false, this 9 would be true, this 4 would be false, this 4 would be true, this 4 would be false, and this 4 would be true, which would make the 9 false, because if the 4 were true, that would be the solution to this cell, and the 9 would be false. So if we begin by assuming that the 9 is true, the chain of inferences tells us that it is actually false. And since this is a contradiction, we know that our original premise of the 9 being true must be incorrect. Therefore, we know the 9 is false and can be eliminated. On a side note, if you are trying to prove this using the DL type 3 logic like we just did, it is always best to start the chain of inferences on the weak link, assuming the weakly linked candidate is true, leading to the contradiction. Because if you start on the other candidate, i.e. the strongly linked candidate, it will lead to a dead end and it will prove nothing. If we start by assuming this 4 is false and go in the other direction, the inferences will tell us that the 9 is also false, which is totally possible. They could both be false, but there's no way to know for sure, so it tells us nothing. But here is another way to look at this. Notice that we can make a weak link from this 4 to this 9, and now it is essentially the same formation as a DL type 1, except that one of the weak links attached to this candidate 9 is coming from within the cell instead of both weak links coming from outside the cell. Now here is a DL type 1. We've got two weak links attached to this 7 in the cell of discontinuity in an otherwise perfect loop. So we know with absolute certainty that this 7 has to be false and can be eliminated. Right? So now let's go back to our original diagram. So because of this construction, we already know that in a chain like this, the candidate with two weak links attached to it has to be false and can be eliminated. Now, if you don't understand this, then please go back and watch tutorial number 42. So the logic of a DL type 3 is exactly the same as the logic for a DL type 1. The configuration is slightly different, but the logic is exactly the same. Now, let's look at this yet another way. 
If we remove the first weak link between the two nines in column four, what do we have? We have an AIC type two, where we have different digit endpoints that lie in cells that can see each other. Starting on the nine down in row nine, we have strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. And what do we know when this happens? We know that the start digit cannot be true in the end cell, and the end digit cannot be true in the start cell. So since this 9 is our start digit, it cannot be true in the end cell and must be false. Now there is no 4 in the start cell, so no elimination can be made there. So any DL type 3 is really just an AIC type 2, but with only one elimination. Because if we had a 4 down here in this cell, it would be foolish to think of this as a DL type 3 because as an AIC type 2, we would get two eliminations instead of just one. Now I'd like to show you one more thing before we go to the examples. Let's imagine that the 1 and the 5 are not in this cell of discontinuity and that it is a bivalue cell containing only the 4 and the 9. So here is our same chain as before, but now that the cell of discontinuity is a bivalue cell, we can make a strong link between the 4 and the 9, or we can make a weak link between the 4 and the 9. So we can think of this as a DL type 2 because the 4 has two strong links attached to it and would therefore be the solution to that cell, or we can think of it as a DL type 1 with this 9 having two weak links attached to it and we would be able to eliminate it, but because it's a five-value cell, the four would be the only candidate left and would therefore be the solution. So in this case, when it's a bivalue cell, you can see it as a DL type two or a DL type one, and it will lead to the same result that the four will be the solution to that cell. All right, let's take a look at some other examples. All right, so here's our chain starting on this two. We've got weak up to this two, strong to the one in the bivalue cell, a surrogate weak link to this one, a strong link down to this one, and a weak link to this four in that cell, and then finally a strong link back to this four. And so here is our cell of discontinuity because we have a weak link going out on the two and a strong link coming back in on the four. So this is a discontinuous loop type three and we know that the weakly linked candidate must be false, so we can eliminate this too. Okay, notice how simple this was, just three candidates and six links. All right, let's go to the next one. Starting on this eight up here, we've got a surrogate weak link down to this eight. Now that's a surrogate weak link because those are the only two eights in that column, so that's really a strong link, but we can use it as a weak link because we can say if this eight is true, this one must be false, and that is the definition of a weak link. So I'm not going to say surrogate weak link every time for the rest of these examples. You'll just know that if it's a strong link and it's marked with a green arrow, it is a surrogate weak link. Okay, so now we've got a strong link over to this 8, a weak link down to this 8, strong to the 1 in the by value cell, weak up to this 1, and then strong over to this 1. Now we have a strong link and a weak link coming into this cell on two different candidates, so that breaks the propagation rules. Now this eight down here in row four, column four, it has a strong link and a weak link attached to it, and that's just one candidate in that cell, so that obeys the propagation rules. But up here, because we have a strong link connected to one candidate and a weak link connected to another candidate, that breaks the rules, and we know that the weakly link candidate must be false, so we can eliminate this eight. Okay? Notice that this time we only use two candidates to make that chain. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, this time we're gonna start on this seven down here in row nine, column one, and we're gonna make a weak link up to this seven, strong to the five in that by value cell, weak over to this five, strong to the nine in that by value cell, weak down to this nine, and finally strong back to this nine, in our cell of discontinuity. We've got a weak link on the seven and a strong link on the nine, so that breaks the rules, and we know the seven must be false because that is the candidate that has the weak link attached to it. Pretty simple, right? Now I would venture to say that these DL type threes are probably the most common 
type of discontinuous loop that you're going to find out there. So you should be looking for these all the time. Okay? All right, next. All right, this time let's start on this two up here in row one, column eight, and make a weak link over to this two. Then we're going to make a strong link down to this two, weak to the seven, strong to this seven, weak back up to this seven, and finally strong to this seven in our cell of discontinuity. We have a strong link and a weak link interacting with that cell attached to two different candidates. Now the reason that breaks the rules is because no matter what kind of link you use to connect the seven and the two, you're going to have either two weak links in a row, or if that was a bi-value cell, you could have two strong links in a row. And that violates the perfect strong, weak, strong, weak sequence that you would find in a continuous loop, for instance. So we know that the weakly linked candidate is false, and we can eliminate this too, okay, because that has the weak link attached to it. Now, because this is the final video of the discontinuous loop series, let's review each type one more time, okay? So here we have a DL type 1, and we're going to start on this 7 in row 4, column 3. And we're going to make a weak link to this 7, strong to this 7, weak to this 7, strong to the 9 in the by value cell, weak to this 9, strong to this 9, weak to this 9, strong to the 1 in another by value cell, weak down to this 1, strong to this 1, weak to the 7, strong to this 7, and finally, weak back to this 7. So here is our cell of discontinuity, and we have two weak links attached to the same candidate, so we know that candidate must be false and can be eliminated. But remember what I told you in video number 42, a DL type 1 is almost always better to be perceived as an AIC. Now if we remove those two weak links attached to that 7, let's see what happens. So now, by removing those two weak links, we've got an AIC type 1. Starting on this 7, in row 4, column 6, we've got strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So we know that one of those two endpoint 7s has to be true, which means any other 7 that can see both of them must be false. And that means all three of these 7s can be eliminated because they can see the two endpoints. Now with our DL type 1, we were able to eliminate this 7. Actually, we could have chosen any one of those and made a DL type 1, but we'd only get one of them. But with the AIC type 1, we get all three. So really, it's always better to see a DL type 1 as an AIC type 1, okay? All right, let's move to the DL type 2. All right, starting on this 7 here in row 9, column 6, we've got strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So we've got two strong links connected to the same candidate in the cell of discontinuity, and so we know that candidate must be true, and we can solve that cell for that candidate. So 7 is going to be the solution to that cell, but notice that this chain was made of only 5s and 7s. So there's a lot you can do with two or three candidates. And we can enter that 7 into that cell. And that's a DL type 2. All right, so let's do one more DL type 3, and then we'll wrap it up for today. All right, this time we're going to start on this candidate 1 in row 1, column 8, and make a weak link over to this one, a strong link to the 6 in the by value cell, a weak link down to this 6, a strong link to the 8 in the by value cell, a weak link over to this 8, and then a strong link up to this 8. So here's our cell of discontinuity because we have a strong link and a weak link interacting with that cell, and they are attached to two different candidates. And we know when that happens that the weakly linked candidate must be false, and so we can eliminate this candidate 1. All right, and that is a DL type 3. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please click the thumbs up icon and the red subscribe button, and be sure to click the little bell icon if you would like to be notified of new video uploads. Well, we're finally nearing the end of the road in this complete course. There is only one more video to go. Today was the last real tutorial. 
The next video, number 45, will be an epilogue to everything we have covered and it will be the final installment in this course. But do not dismay, my friends. I will soon be resuming production of my random tips and tricks series and my pencil and paper method. And I'm already gearing up to begin my advanced series for all of you Sudoku super freaks. Ha ha. So we've got a long way to go and I hope to see you right back here for all of that and more. In the meantime, be well and be happy.